Okay, um, now we need to, to connect the, the monitor. The monitor is going to be connected to, obviously, the, this part of the computer. So I'm just going to take a standard VGA plug. Walk around, you know. So the monitor plug is right here. And I'm using a, um, my keyboard and mouse are going to be wireless, so I have those plugged in here already. And the USB ports. If you have a corded mouse and a corded um, keyboard, you'll either use uh, the USB for the mouse or this position and this position for the keyboard. Now to turn it on, you need to make sure that you have all of the, all of the plugs plugged into the outlet. I have mine going to a, a strip, power strip inside one of the, in the bottom portion here, so I'm just going to plug that in, plug my monitor in. And this is the main power for the, for the CNC electronics. You can turn that on. You need to tighten the... Then, you need to turn on your computer. To do that, you press the button to turn on the computer. And I have this working under Linux, generally. I have Windows loaded here also, but it's um, the, the machine runs under Linux, and it's under the EMC2 software. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to calibrate. Okay, so we're using uh, EMC2, which is under um, Ubuntu, or Linux, you can always do it under another distro. Uh, and distro is just another version of Linux. Uh, I use a single master file called Red Frog Master Code, uh, and this particular one is revision uh, 12. I'm going to have a separate video on, on uh, installing Ubuntu and configuring it. If you purchase the machine from us and, we, and you purchase the, the full um, assembly and, and configuration version, then we will have all of this configured for you. And generally, you're just going to go to application CNC and you're going to do the step configure, um, step conf, step configure wizard. And you're just going to go through some uh, wizard of screens to set up your, your stepping motors and um, what type of drivers you have and what, what have you. Uh, and we're going to use two different types of uh, programs with this. Uh, one is obviously the, uh, the EMC, and the other one is called CamView. It's something you have to start in terminal. You can actually have this in the EMC2, but you have to have the development version of EMC2 to be able to invoke it, but you can always have this working side by side. CamView-EMC is the program. Okay, so you'll have a view of uh, what's underneath your camera. The camera is located right here, obviously. You know that because you watch the installation videos. And you'll also see that there are crosshairs. Uh, you can actually make those crosshairs look a little bit better. XOR, so you have that. And when you start your, your EMC2, you're gonna have, you're gonna have the, um, the control software running side by side, so when you when you move your axes, let me turn the unit on. Let me turn it off. When you turn on your, uh, your your control, you'll notice that when I move, you'll see the camera moving at the same time. And then this will give you precise control of where the the end effector is located, the nozzle, uh, and where you're going to home it. And generally, I'm not going to be using homing switches. I did on my prototype, but I found that homing with the camera is far superior to using the limit switches. Limit switches, you're going to be off a tiny bit in each direction every time you, you re reset it because of the mechanical nature of, of limit switches. But when you have something that's optical and you always have it at the same level every single time, you're going to be able to get it right on. And I'm going to be using uh, edges of my rail to actually uh, home my, my machine. So uh, to home it, I go to um, 0.005 inch step and I will just move it to the edges of the rail. And to get more precise, you can always go to a thousandth of an inch and just keep moving it until it gets to the right position. And you will, you will notice a tiny bit of change as you start moving the, the motors. Okay, so that looks like it's homed in the X and Y, the home axis, home axis. And now the Z we have to home. And I use the, um, the paper technique for homing. And while, while it is home according to these rails, I'm gonna home the Z in this posi particular position. This is important to understand that if the overall table is not at the exact same Z, then um, 
it will make a difference um, using the machine overall. So you want to make sure that you're homing the Z in the same place you've homed the X and Y. And also make sure that you have some clear table at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and move the Z axis at 0 .005 steps. It should get down here eventually. I'll put the paper underneath it. And as it gets close, I start moving the paper. And if it gets essentially um, I'm still able to move the paper, but it's, it has some resistance. That's where my zero is. As long as it's at the same place every time, that's what matters. So I'm going to take the Z. So I'm going to take the Z and I'm going to home that axis. Now with the A axis, I make sure that the nozzle or the, uh, the, um, the air um, intake is at this location. This is going to be my zero. And over here, it's going to be 90. And over here is 108. You can turn it a little bit more than that. But I like to home it at, the, at this particular position. Of course, um, that all depends on how you want to set up your machine. You can home it at this location if you want to. You can also home it at um, this to be zero, and then this is negative 90, and then this is negative 180. Or you can also invert it, so this is zero, this is 90, and this is 180. It depends on how you set up your, your, your configuration. So I'm going to go ahead and home my A at, the, at that particular zero. And this does make it, this does matter because uh, this nozzle will change its position slightly depending on the, uh, the rotation and in the G-code you have to compensate for that. So I've set up uh, variables for, for that type of compensation and I will be explaining that as well.